Hello, hello. How is everybody? I all of a sudden had this like heart stopping moment of like, oh goodness, what if the camera, the mic isn't on, but I had turned it on. <laughs> How is everybody? How are you? It has been a long time, or at least it feels like it's been a long time since the last live stream. I want to welcome you to this place. Welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel. It is so good to have you here. We've got lots of people in the chat already. It is so good to see everybody. We've got Ruth and Maxwell, Sarah, Dagmar, Julie, Florence. Welcome everyone. Dana, Kristen, Martha, Sam, Elizabeth, Helene. Um, who else is here? Mia is here. Brittany, uh, Charlotte. It's so good to see everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, We've got some big announcements to make today, so and some little chitter chatter about that. Um, welcome to Deborah and Becky, Becca, Becky, Becca, and Eve and Wendy. It's so good to see you guys. Um, just before we get into the show, and before I forget, because I want to make sure that I just have one little tiny announcement. I have put in, and this effect doesn't affect anybody except for just a hand, like two or three people. Um, on Patreon, usually when you edit your tier or you change which tier you, you support in, I send you a little message just saying like, thank you so much for continuing to support. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. So it's just a little message just to say like, you know, let me know if, if, if you're sort of finding your way or if you need any additional help. Um, for whatever reason, Patreon isn't letting me use the messaging function. I just get the circle that goes on and on and on and I can't message anyone. So if you have tried to message me or you've tried to send me a, a, a note, like a direct message on Patreon, I don't know that I'm getting them right now. I have put in a ticket for support and for help. Um, I suspect it's been an issue since they did the last soft, software update on Patreon. Um, so I just um, wanted to just kind of put it out there. If you've messaged me or if you haven't received a message acknowledging that you've shifted yourself around, that's why. And that affects like three or four people. A couple of you are in the chat. That's why I'm mentioning it. Um, so just if there's anything um, that you need to know about shifting around or if you have any questions about your new tier where you're currently pledging or whatever, please just, just reach out to me. Um, just housekeeping stuff. I I... I've only in however many years I've been on Patreon for, I think I've been on Patreon for like six years now, coming up on seven. Um, I, I've had like the number of issues I've had, I can count on like one hand and I would only use one or two fingers. So that's really good. This is the first time I've, I've had an issue with the software not working. So, all right. So um, before we get into the show and before we get into lots of chitter chatter, I have two huge drinks here to save my voice so that I can keep on going. Um, I just want to welcome anybody who's new to the podcast. If you're just watching for the first time, welcome. I hope that you find something here that you like, that you enjoy, that you would like to continue to um, uh, view, you know, tune in and watch. Um, welcome to this place. We focus mostly on spinning and hand spinning on uh, wheels, spindles, support spindles. And uh, we, I talk a lot about knitting with my hand spun, weaving with my hand spun, working with my hand spun. I pretty much work exclusively now with hand spun, except for the work that I'm doing for my Ontario Hand Weavers and Spinners Master Weaver uh, certificate. So that that's mostly commercial yarn. It is all commercial yarn, but I don't talk about it on the podcast very much. Um, you get, we talk about like the process and we talk about the, uh, the, the program and, and we talk about sort of what it's like engaging in something like that. But, um, the actual physical work I have to kind of just do quietly in the corner by myself, which is kind of sad, <laughs> but it's true. Anybody who's a returning viewer, who's coming back again and again, thank you so much for coming back and for watching the show. If you don't mind taking a moment to like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I always forget to ask people to do that and I need to get better about it. So thank you for um, doing that for me. I really appreciate it. And lastly, Patreon, welcome and thank you to all of our patrons of the community. You guys are the ones that keep the lights on. You're the ones that uh, mean that I can continue to do this work and I, I really appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you so much. Uh, you, um, your, your continued patronage and engagement and, and work here, um, the stuff that you share, your enthusiasm, your support of one another, it's uh, really incredible. And I have learned as much from you as I'm sure that some of you have learned from me. I feel like I, I just share like a drop in the bucket of what the vast amount of knowledge that shared 
um, it's, it's just incredible. So thank you. If you are curious about like the Slack channel and the community and getting involved, please just reach out to me, Rachel at welfordpearls.com. And that's Welford, W E L F O R D P U R L S. So it's pearls, like, uh, the pearl side of your knitting P U R L S. All right. Um, yeah, Dion, she's asking, do you have to use commercial yarn for your weaving certification for the, for what I'm working on for the OHS you do, because, um, they actually ask you to do specific warps in specific yarns. So the finger manipulated lace or weaver manipulated lace unit that I just finished, I put the finishing touches on my binder. It is ready to go in the mail. I'm just waiting to hear back from the instructor, uh, that it's okay that I send it, um, was in 16, two linen. So, you know, it's very specific, um, very specific. So, all right. So we are streaming an hour later this month because my kids have camps. Um, they are currently at their white caps camp. My mom offered to pick them up so that I could still stream today. Um, because there was a player appearance today, which is very exciting for us white caps fans. So, and white caps FC is our Vancouver soccer team football for those who are overseas and in the rest of the world. So um, the kids are super excited and they um, are doing that. So my mom graciously offered to pick them up so that I could be here with you, which is awesome. So I, Eve, I will address your fo your question. I saw it. Thank you so much. I, I saw it. I will address it in just a moment. So I think what we should do is just like get right into the new announcements, the news. Anybody who hasn't looked on Patreon recently, um, let's get into that first. Okay, big news, big news. We've got big stuff to share. Uh, for those who have not heard, um, so when I started all of this back in 2014, uh, you, uh, many of you know this already. Uh, so we'll just kind of go through, like I'll just sort of share a little bit of like, you know, where I've been, where we were, where, where we're going, where we are and where we're going. Um, I started all of this on a on basically a wing and a prayer. Um, I turned on the camera on my laptop, which at that time was pretty crappy, and started recording and hoping that somebody out there was interested and that somebody would want to listen. And I did that back in 2014 because bless his heart, my husband was sick of me talking to him about yarn. He turned to me, I've, to, I've told this story quite a number of times, but he turned to me one day and he was like, I. I know you're excited about this stuff. I, I know you just love it so much, but I, I just, I don't care. <laughs> and he, just his honesty, and he wasn't trying to be mean. He was just like, enough. So, and my friend Diana, who's in the chat today, it's so good to see you, Diana. Um, she's tuning in from North Vancouver. She, uh, her and I were chatting regularly, but it just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the same um, as, as sort of, you know, it was her and I, and I had joined the, my local guild, which, which I'm still very, very much involved with. Um, her and I, you know, and we, so we had sort of this, this new guild community and, and I just found myself, you know, wondering if there were other people out there who wanted to have this conversation because at that time knitting podcasts have really taken off. They continue to be extremely, um, uh, popular. I think many of us tune into some of them and I, I just thought maybe there's some people out there that want to talk about spinning too. Obviously, I'm an avid knitter, and I thought, well, I could be part of that conversation too, and then maybe you know, and then maybe somebody could would want to talk about yarn with me too. <laughs> but looking back, I'm like, of course there were people. How could there not be? But you know, it like you know, at the time, you you, you kind of don't know. You're kind of casting your anchor out and sort of hoping that that you know something's going to catch. So you know that, that that there's something under there. You know that that there's something to sort of anchor your boat on. So. Anyhow, 
over the years, uh, the podcast grew. We started the Ravelry group and uh, I remember getting in touch with a friend of mine and being like, can you join the Ravelry group so I'm not the only one? And she joined right away. And um, you know, I, you sort of start this stuff and you hope. And then it started to grow from there. And Mike started to, you know, to sort of point out to me that I was spending a lot of time on the podcast. Uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears, quite literally. And, um, you know, just becoming more and more and more involved with, you know, producing content and recording episodes and getting stuff out on time, making sure there wasn't a lag between episodes for too, too long and, and so on and so forth. You guys have been along on this path with me, you, you know. So that was when we jumped onto Patreon. And I sort of published on Patreon that first post thinking like maybe there will be a handful of people that would be willing to support. And you guys just blew me out of the water once again. And the, the support was unbelievable and it has continued to grow since then. And we've had ebbs and flows over the years because you know, we've, I've eliminated tiers or we've changed course or, um, you know, we've done things differently or, you know, people have moved away and they've changed their lives. And one big thing that seems to really affect people and, and what they're doing is, is when they have a family, when, when kids come along and, and then they come back and, you know, once the kids are a couple of years old and they're starting to kind of carve out that time for themselves again. And so we've had like all these like life events and people coming and going. But this entire time, I've been doing this by myself. Um, I've been, so, and I, you know, I think some, I'll, I'll get the occasional message every so often, um, you know, you and your, and it'll be addressed like, you know, to Dear Rachel and the team, or, you know, to the team of Wool and Spinning, or like, you know, just different language and whatnot. And um, yeah, it's just been me this whole time since 2014. So that's eight years, uh, coming up nine. And, um, and I've been so happy to do that. So excited. And... Yeah, something changed back in June. So I've been hinting at it. I've been sort of, you know, niggling at it a little bit, but I really felt like I couldn't say anything more than just the odd thing that I had mentioned because it involved another person. So she's in the chat and I hope that you guys will give just an unbelievably warm welcome, a woolen spinning welcome. I want chat to blow up um, to say welcome to Rebecca. So Rebecca, who is in the chat, she's Rebecca Osborne, as, as, cause there are a number of Rebecca's in our community. <laughs> um, they, uh, please, please send her a warm, warm welcome to the team. So she is going to be joining us, joining me. It's not us. It's just me joining me. So what ended up happening was, uh, she, I sent out that email back in June and said like, you know, we're going to, you know, t um, I, I'm going to step back a little bit. I don't know what the future is for, for um, the wool circle. Thank you, you guys. You're doing an awesome job welcoming her. And um, uh, th so the wool circle went on hiatus over the summer. And Rebecca reached out to me and she was like, I could do that. I would love to join you and do that. So that is what's happening. It is starting in September. So um, I've been alluding to this and going through a lot of history, but I, I, I think it's important for you guys to know where I'm coming from and, and what's sort of happening. And I am so excited to welcome Rebecca. She's one of my closest friends. She's been a part of our community since the inception and since the beginning. And um, I think it's just, it's time. And it came at the right time. It, it came when I was open to it and ready for it. I often think that uh, people, you know, you just need to be in the right, the right frame of mind. So what is happening as you guys are welcoming her? Thank you so much. I knew chat would blow up. You guys are amazing. Thank you. So everybody's saying welcome, you know, welcome. Yay to Rebecca. Um, for those who don't know Rebecca, please take a moment. If you're in the Slack channel to take a moment just to, to reach out and to say hello. Um, you know, she's, yeah, she's just so excited. Diana, Diana says, um, welcome, um, to Rebecca for taking this on. She's looking forward to it. So good. Um, so a little bit about Rebecca. She is from uh, rank, she, or sorry, she's from um, Maryland, but she, in the states. But she actually is living with her husband right now. They are newly minted Canadians, um, uh, dual citizens. They just did their citizenship for Canada, which is amazing. Um, uh, they live in Rankin Inlet with their three children, uh, three girls, and Rebecca will tell you a little bit more about herself in the first episode of the Wool Circle. I'm really excited for you guys to see that. So. What this sort of looks like is on August 31st, and we're in Toronto for that week, so I will get back to people as much as and as quickly as I can. Um, Rebecca, um, sorry, at the 
as we go from August into September so that people do not get double charged on Patreon. If I opened up all of these tiers right now, you would get charged for August and then September 1st would come along and you would also be charged for September, okay? So to try to prevent that, I will be opening these tiers, um, the upper tiers on um, August 31st. There will be limited space. For the wool circle, for the live streamed wool circle, it is twice a month. Um, the first one will be a premiere because I am away. Um, but after that, they'll be they'll be pre-recorded but live streamed, so there will be chat. Um, so this would be pre-recorded right now, but you guys would still be able to chat. Um, and it's a protected link and all that kind of stuff. Um, that that is open. You can move into that anytime because it is unlimited. Anybody can be a part of that tier. It is it is open. What is not going to be unlimited and what is what is sort of coveted is Rebecca will also be running a group. So I run the queries and explorations group twice a month uh, on Saturdays and we cover sort of anything that people are wondering about, anything that they have questions about, anything that they're struggling with. Rebecca's group, which will be called the spinning staples, so we'll call you guys the staplers, um, we'll be delving into more detail of, on what Rebecca co covers in the wool circle. So it'll be like sampling, color management, fiber preparation, anything that she's working on, stuff that you guys can ask. You can, you can go along with her on her journey and do stuff at the same time. And in that group, you guys will be talking about that specifically. That group are staples, they, staplers, they will be meeting on Wednesday afternoons, um, the following week after the Wool Circle streams. So that'll give you guys time to kind of work on your stuff and come to group. There is a limited number of spots for that tier and that is what will open the night going into September 1st. So mark it on your calendar if you would like to be a stapler. The other thing that will open that same night is a tier that's higher. So it's called the Studious Spinner. We've had this tier before. That will give you access to both groups. So if you, and again, that space in that is in, incredibly limited. So if you would like to be in both groups, that will be the tier for you. Um, so like I said, there's only a couple, there will only be a few spots in that upper tier, the Studious Spinner. That's what you're looking for. Um, and again, you know, we're just kind of getting going and getting started. So this is all new to me and Rebecca. It's new, new for us to kind of organize and to get going and get running. And, um, it's really exciting. And I am going to run a little video of Rebecca talking about this stuff in her words. So welcome to Rebecca. For me, as I step into this space, space, one thing that Rachel and I were noticing that as she has grown as a spinner and is getting kind of up into the stratosphere of topics like cotton and um, luxury fibers and spinning on supported spindles and weaving, there are always going to be people joining this community who are wanting to go back to those foundational topics that were covered earlier in the history of wool and spinning and who are maybe not ready to jump into those other topics. So I'm here to spend some time really digging into those foundational topics, things like uh, spinning, uh, spinning an intentional yarn, how to sample and get the yarn that you want, colored management and color blending, um, and any other topics that we decide are relevant. I want to stay focused on wool and I wanna stay focused on those things that we always come back to. Sorry, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for saying something right away, you guys. Um, so that is Rebecca. So welcome to Rebecca. And um, I'm sorry for sort of the long monologue today and sharing all of this with you. Um, but um, it's important to go through it and make sure that you guys know that there are some changes coming and who the changes in, are involved and, and who's there. Um, yeah, I had muted my mic while Rebecca was doing her thing. So if there's any background noise, it wouldn't pick it up. Sorry, guys. Um, 
so yeah, that is, that is Rebecca. She, um, I'm really excited to have her coming on board. This is all written in the ketchup and pickles post for August. So if you're confused and you're not sure exactly where this is all coming from, you're not on Patreon, you don't know about the different tiers, please have a look at that post and, um, yeah, and, and get acquainted. We would love to have you. So, uh, yeah, it's really exciting. So that is, the big change and the big news and I'm really excited to be a part of a team I'm really excited to um, to not sort of be um, on my uh, you know sort of a lone wolf and um, it's really exciting so spindle spun summer I'll just talk about this really quickly spindle spun summer has been going on um, sort of since the uh, summer equinox and it's gonna go all the way till the eve of the fall sorry the summer solstice all the way to the fall the the fall the, the autumnal equinox and uh, it is, um, I left myself in thumbnail because I was thinking I would stay there and show you guys what we were going to talk about next. But then I was like, no, this is, this is too small. <laughs> so thank you for bearing with me, you guys. Um, the other thing, I will say one more thing about, Re um, about Rebecca coming on board. Um, I think for me personally, um, I think I was really needing some more balance with the kids being at home right now with their schooling. I was looking at the fall feeling really overwhelmed. And I think the one thing that we all have this, this sort of one thing that we, that we can control is who we give our time to and how much of that time we give to those other things. It doesn't have to be people, just those other things. And I was spending a lot of time feeling like I was doing things that I, I didn't necessarily need to be doing. Um, and with the kids at home so much, my time, it gets eaten away really quickly. And so Mike and I've been looking for ways to kind of streamline a little bit. And I'm feeling really um, energized by that and, and really positive because I need to eke out time for my OHS stuff, for my master weaver. I need to eke out time to do a shift at the hospital um, and get that done in my bare minimum that I need to do. Podcast, family, like it goes on and on. And there's just nothing left at the end for my own making and my own creating and my own process. And um, I was even telling virtual spin group this morning, like I have not worked on anything all summer um, other than my unit three work. And um, it doesn't necessarily always feel good. And so a lot of this has to do with just realigning, you know, what's most important. Dion's asking, do you still have the goal of making this your full-time job? I'm not sure um, because I don't know right now what that might look like in a few years, um, but I'm very, very open to the possibility and Mike and I talk about it all the time. So I don't know if that helps. Um, the other thing too is like, um, you know, just getting my shifts in at the hospital and making sure that I maintain my competency for ICU. I work in an incredibly acute ICU with um, a really large staff and I have to be able to work enough to keep my competency high. Um, I'm one of the most senior nurses. I want to be able to go in and contribute and take that load off for that one shift off of that full timer who is so burned out. And I want to go in and be able to smile and do my job and do it well and then be able to leave and come back to this. So I think that's really important to identify that that is one of the things that I uh, do aspire to maintain. So um, that's, a, that's a big uh, priority for me to be able to go in and, and, and do that work and do it well and then to be able to, you know, to then be able to leave. So I hope that helps to sort of help to clarify some of that. So spindle spun summer will run all the way till the, uh, the autumnal equinox. That's what I was trying to say earlier. And um, I've been working on my Cormo. So I have just, that's all I've been doing. I haven't really done anything else. I was desperately hoping I would have myself down done today. Nope. But I have been taking my spindles to work and I do, I have worked on them a little bit. Quite a few are quite full. And I, as they get really full, this isn't that full, but as they fill up, this is my Allen Berry, as they fill up, I've been just grabbing another spindle and continuing on. So I haven't been worrying about winding them off, getting stuff onto storage bobbins, you know, getting it all stored and um, utilizing the same spindle again. I have enough spindles that I can just keep on spinning. So I've just, you know, put that spindle in the, in the bin to sort of get wound off and then I'm on to the next one. So. I came home from work on Saturday night because I worked Saturday and Sunday this past weekend and um, 
It was a very, very challenging weekend. Um, great pod mates, great, great team members, um, just, just really, really steady and really, really busy. And um, so I came home once, and so on my break in the afternoon, I did get an afternoon break, and I sat outside and I, I filled up the remainder of my Mirkwood spindle, uh, which is my POC, which is one of my absolute most favorite spindles. And so then going into work on Sunday morning, I grabbed my Volchuk Art spindle and I started it. This is all I got done because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really sit on Sunday. <laughs> you know, you've had really busy days when both days were 10,000 step days. And the reason why I say that is because in ICU, unlike if I was nursing on the ward, for example, in ICU, we, we, our desks are right at the door going into our room. So we've got these big sliding glass doors and you go into your room and you're, you're sort of, you're nursing items are sort of here, like envision them being where the desk is right here. And where I'm standing is the patient bed. So you spend a lot of time just pivoting. So you're not really walking. And uh, so getting 10,000 steps in a shift is like in ICU for me is a big deal. <laughs> so I was like really busy because on my coffee break, I usually go out for a walk so that I can just get like just eke out 8,000 steps. So it is tricky. I'm worried the neighborhood girls are going to come to the door knocking on the door. I'm going to have to ignore it. Um, they're fundraising. So that's what I've been working on, but I do have something pretty major to share with you. I did actually get some sample yarn done. So let me flip. This is why I had left myself as a thumbnail. Um, and I will share with you. Okay. So what I did was I'm going to talk while this is running. I actually, um, took so my dad built me this Lazy Kate based on my friend Kim McKenna's Lazy Kate. So my dad built this for me. And the reason why he built it for me is because he used thinner uh, rods, metal rods, that actually fit the bo the weaving bobbins. Because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but your Lazy Kates that fit your spinning bobbins, they don't fit the weaving bobbins. So he made me this and there's uh, six rods on here. So I can actually have up to six bobbins on here. And um, what I did was I took the storage bobbins of all of that cornmeal that I've been support spindle spinning. Give me a sec. Also, thank you, Diane, for your comment about I'm glad that you're keeping your eye on the important ball. I really appreciate that. And actually, um, uh, you were one of the people, Diane, who really kind of gave me the guts to do some of this stuff and to sort of, you know, engage in some of this stuff and, and to think outside the box um, because you had homeschooled all your kids and and um, there are others in this community who are in the same boat and my kids aren't 100% homeschooled they're hybrid but uh, they're in a hybrid program but um, just recognizing that there's only so much of you to go around do you know what I mean so um, I the this is these are all the singles of the Cormo that I have spun thus far, um, and I still have just a very little bit of fiber left. I'm hoping I can take it to Toronto with us and finish it off. And I'm a bit worried about taking my support spindles on the airplane in terms of getting through security. Does anybody have any tips about that? Has anybody flown within Canada with anything like that? Um, so these are my spindles, and um, I've been spinning along. And basically, I, I decided to start to sample and try to figure out like what I'm going to do with um, all of this stuff. So I made a two ply and then I did a, oh good, they just left a flyer at the front door. And then I did a three ply, which is here. Is this one the three ply? And you can see in the video that what I did was I started off with the two ply. I was putting this woolly winder through the gears. So I'll talk about that in just a second because I, um, I didn't love it. Um, I just got it. It was from, from a friend. Um, so I did the two ply and then I disconnected it and I knotted it and I added the third single so that, so that I knew where the two ply ended and the three ply started. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I continued on plying the three ply, which is here and we'll, we'll go under, we'll do these under the camera in just a few minutes and we'll talk about it. And then I did that again. I plied up and then I broke it again and I added a fourth single. So I have a four ply here. I think I had mentioned to you guys at the beginning that I really wasn't invested particularly in which I ended up with. If I made a four ply, if I made a three ply, if I made a two ply. I have to ply this yarn because of the naps and, and just the unevenness of the roving. Um, it's incredibly fine. There's, there's a lot of naps in it. Um, it's... Uh, 
it's it's been great for learning how to support spindle to be honest because it's an entire pound and i just have to keep going i'm getting quite a bit faster and um, we can talk about all of that in the learning journey and whatnot once i finish because i've got sort of some overarching reflections that i think i'll share with you when we get to that point so then i did the four plies so before we talk about the samples themselves they are not washed and finished um, i should have done that but i just haven't had a chance and i'll, I'll have those ready for next show so um the woolly winder so this is new to me um, it's been used extensively by the friend that i got this from it came with my rose that she just gave me and um uh, i had used this woolly winder on the rose prior to pulling it off to put a conventional bobbin and, and or a fit and um uh, flyer on uh for the south down that i've been spinning for this so what I don't like about it, I, I've used Woolly Winders before. I had a Woolly Winder with my Hanson um, before I sold that to my friend Lynn of West Coast Color. I just, they pull so hard. I have talked about this before. Um, and it's so funny that Eve, um, I had a feeling I asked you this before, but what are your thoughts on the tension on the Woolly Winder? You, you just, you probably remember us talking about it, Eve, and that's kind of what's sparking in your mind. But I, I've talked about this before. I keep, so this is when I added the four, the fourth single. So this is the four ply. So the two ply, I'll talk about that later. So I have talked about this before. I spin with very little uptake. And that's one of the reasons why I cross lace my flyer. And, um, because I find that I just can't get a light enough uptake. And the first time that the first thing that most people do when they sit down at my wheel, is they tighten it up, they tighten up the tension. And I don't like that feeling of it being ripped out of my hands. And the entire time I was plying on the woolly winder, that's what it felt like. And it just, I loosened and loosened and loosened and loosened. And I don't know if you guys can see, but in the corner there, down where the tension peg is, look at the peg below. If you can see, it's really, really hard to see, but if you can see down in the corner there where the spring is supposed to be taut and hanging like this, if you see in the video there in the corner, it's hanging down, it's angled downward, and there's no tension on it whatsoever. That's how loose I had, and it was still pulling too hard. So then I let off the tension completely, and um, I still had to leave the brake band on there, but I let it off completely, completely, and that helped a little bit um, to sort of alleviate where I was like, yeah, I could probably see myself plying this um, for a while. I had oiled it, I had loosened it up um, to make sure that it was running really nicely. It's just the feel. It's, you know, it's nice not having to stop for sure and not having to move your guide and whatnot. I mean, that's, that's great for sure. Um, but I'm not sure it's necessarily my favorite. So I'm just being honest about like my, the way I spin and the way that that pull is, I think it's important to, uh, you know, acknowledge that we all have different needs and wants. So Dion said about the spindles that she had issues on an international flight. That's really good to know. We're not checking anything because of all the issues at the airports right now. So I have to be really careful. Um, flying across Canada, I've almost always had my bag, bag taken for a search and they've always been curious, but once explained, they haven't been taken. Okay, good to know, Max. Thank you. Um, yes, Dion says, I recently spun some Cormo and it wanted to spin super thin. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Diane says about the woolly winder, I don't feel like it winds on fast enough when I'm feeding a length of plied yarn onto the bobbin. The bobbin doesn't seem to pack as well. You know, it's funny you would say that Diane, because I found that with my Hanson, it never packed as tightly as, as I liked it. And I don't know if it's the way that the woolly winder just kind of lays the yarn on as it wraps on. Um, but yeah, I, the, the quickness of it isn't, isn't, uh, necessarily my favorite. Uh, back to air travel. I don't think there is consistency in air travel across the country. Bring a few storage bobbins and fiber and buy a new spindle and have it sent there. You can always mail it home. You know, that's not a bad idea, actually, Ruth. Um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> there are spindle makers in Ontario. I could get one sent from Ontario. So, um, 
The other thing that I need to do too with my rose, it's funny because I've been spinning all the baby doll self down on it. And it's funny because I was, I was spinning it the other night. We've been working our way through all of the Marvel movies with the kids, the ones that are age appropriate. And um, the, so like we haven't shown them Black Widow, for example. And I need to get a second, Eve, Eve was asking about the ratios on the smallest whirl for the rose. I need to get the smallest whirl because I have the standard whirl right now. And it's funny because like it's not fast enough. I need to get the the lace whirl. So I need to order that for the, for the Mashcraft, for the, for the rose. Um, I'll have to get in touch with my local person to get her to order that for me. Um, Martha's asking, I'm, imp I'm so impressed that your bobbins are so evenly done and do not have big sections, um, and then smaller. And how do you do it? So the way that I do my bobbins without creating any peaks and valleys is, um, I cross lace my flyer and that makes a huge difference because when you cross lace your flyer there's a blog post on it if somebody is on a desktop and wants to take a moment to look for it on welfordpearls.com search cross lacing and the blog post will come up if somebody could post that in the chat um, by Diane it's so good to see you uh, we will see you um, what I do is I, I wrap the singles, so the singles are threaded onto your flyer and then I wrap them around the other arm of the flyer. And what that does is the, the singles naturally will move back and forth just with, by like physics and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they, they move back and forth. And what that does is it prevents the creation of, of peaks and valleys. So you don't have the singles wrapping on in one spot. They actually kind of shift and move and it, and it, and it, fills them evenly. So you can see this bobbin's finished, but this bobbin is sort of a work in progress. And you can see that I've got like a little bit of a peak here, but it's nothing like what you would get if I didn't cross lace. Um, and so that's one of the best ways to prevent peaks and valleys. And the thing about that, about cross lacing, um, I had a conversation with my friend Kim McKenna about this. If you don't, if you do cross lace and you sort of do do that and, and it allow you, you can fit more on your bobbins because you don't have all these peaks and valleys. And then when you go to wind off your singles, like a good little spinner so that you can ply from the first spun end, and we'll talk about my Cormo samples in just a moment. These have been rewound onto storage bobbins from the first spun end. Um, when you go to rewind them, you're, the singles aren't buried down in between each other in the valleys. You know how they get like they get stuck down there, um, and they start to kind of stick together, and they don't necessarily come off the bobbin really nicely. That prevents a lot of it because the singles have been laid on more evenly. Does that help? Um, oh, Becca, no, we can't see it. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if only I can post links because it's an unlisted, uh, thing. That's okay. I will do it quickly now. So easy. I knew you would be on it, Becca. Thank you so much. Um, here is the blog post here. There you go. It's an old post. It's from 2016, but, um, it is still, still relevant. Um, it's funny because that's one of the most looked up posts on the blog, which is kind of funny. All right, so let me flip cameras. I'm just moving things around. And it's really difficult to cross lace a, um, to cross lace a, uh, a Kromsky because they have the hooks. Um, but what I do is I still cross lace it and I let it just jimmy between the hooks on the opposite flyer arm. Um, but it, it's not as easy on, on there that this is where the smooth, uh, arms on your flyer makes a big difference. So just kind of putting that bug in people's ear. I do still cross lace my Kromsky. It's just not quite as easy. Uh, Bren Boone, Snurb Yarn, she used to have photos of her Kromskis when she still spun a lot from like a few years ago on her Instagram profile. Like you would have to scroll back like two or, two or three years, but she used to have beautiful photos of her cross-laced Kromsky arms because um, she spun on a Sonata. Is that what she spun on? Anyhow, if you're curious about doing it on a... Uh, Kromsk, on a Kromsky and that's what you spin on. Just have a look at her stuff. 
Yeah, that makes a big difference, Eve. So Eve was saying on her Kromskis, she actually took the hooks off and put them on the same side of, as, of the flyer as the other hooks and slightly offset them so that um, they weren't on the opposite. I find it really frustrating that the hooks are on the opposite. It's, it's really annoying. Thank you, Sharon, for welcoming Rebecca. So for the Cormo samples, we're kind of all over the place today. I'm really sorry, you guys. This was the original, original sample that I did. Um, I did this back um, when I first got the roving back from Liz of Kingdom Fleece and Fiber, and I did this like bulky two ply just to kind of see. It's got a lot of bulk to it. It's very squishy. And it's funny because feeling it now, um, I totally get why I didn't like it at the time, but I also was hypercritical of it. And I was like, I don't like this yarn. It's horrible, blah, blah. It's fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't my favorite at the time. And it's still not really my favorite. It's a bit, it's a bit kind of typical of those fine, of the fine wools. Like it just looks, you know, you don't see that really defined difference between the singles and it looks wool and spun and you know, it's, it's bulkier. It's thicker. It's, it's fine. It's just not my favorite. <laughs> um, so uh, that it was the original sample. So these are the spindle spun samples. And it's really funny working with such white roving because I don't very often work with such white roving. Um, it's, it's like I can see all of the like dust and dirt that gets caught in it. It's funny how that happens. So I have to um, just refocus the camera. I, I have to fix the autofocus. So this is the three ply. That's how that came out. And it came out at about 20 wraps per inch. Um, so, you know, fi very fine fingering weight, um, very fine, nice, nice twist angle. This has not been washed yet. You can see how it's, it's evened out a little bit. It's a, it, you know, it's rounder. It's, a, you know, there's areas that are still, you can see the naps and stuff a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see some of that, but, um, it's not as even as I would like it to be, but it's, it's not bad. The, the three ply really evened, even the, the singles out nicely. There is still some VM in it for sure. And then this one is the four ply. And it's funny because I can tell it's the four ply because it's so round. It is so round. It's still very fine. Is this the four ply? I think this is the three ply. This is the four ply that I was showing you. Yeah, so just look at how round that is. It's really, really, really round. And then if you look at this one next to it, and I'll refocus this for you. Um, it's, it's, it is still very round, but it's not, it, and this is a bit bulkier. So this is about um, uh, 18 or 19 wraps per inch, and this is about 20 wraps per inch. Um, but you can see the four ply is even more round. It's hard working with really active yarn. <laughs> But you can see how, you know, the, the three ply is, is, is very round, but the four ply is even more round. Um, so those are those two yarns. And then in contrast, so just remember that roundness, okay? You guys are on it. Do you ever apply your spindle singles on a spindle? I do, but there's just too many of these ones, actually, Max. Um, this is going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards. I think this could actually get into the thousands. Um, if I do it as a two ply, it will absolutely be over three or 4,000 yards of yarn. Um, if I do it as a three ply, it'll probably be 2000 yards. Um, cause remember this is a, uh, lace, lace singles at about 60 wraps per inch and it's a pound. So, um, this will be done on my wheel, uh, with the woolly winder. <laughs> because otherwise it just will take too long. So this is the two ply. So it's really interesting how the two ply looks really, really different from the other two. It's much flatter, more oval looking. It's very, very, very fine. Um, it's not quite as even. However, that would all be hidden in a piece of woven fabric. Like this would all be hidden. And this is 24 wraps per inch under tension. So all of these I measured under a little bit of tension because that's how it would be held on the loom. So my original plan with these yarns, and I'll show them to you like sort of one, two, three, like in a row so you can see the difference between the three because that's when you really appreciate the differences. I don't know which I'm gonna settle on just yet, but when you see these three side by side, 
Um, the the four ply is the most like a knitting yarn. Um, it's got it's got some nice elasticity, so you can see that there. Um, the three ply has some good elasticity. The two ply a little bit less. Um, but when you see them sort of all lined up, one, two, three, you can see how round the four ply is. And this is like, this would just be a phenomenal knitting yarn. It'd be great for a sweater. Um, this is sort of right in between it. You could do, you could do either. And this would be a great heirloom lace knitted yarn, um, or a something woven. I could, I could see either. So yeah, very different yarns, same singles. Isn't that cool? So I would love to hear what you guys think. <laughs> the knitters are going to say the four ply and the weavers are going to say the two ply. <laughs> um, so now I have to decide what I'm going to do uh, about the, um, what I'm going to do about the actual um, like project, what I'm going to do. And the thing is, is I, I'm not completely certain about how much yardage I'm going to have. So um, this has taken many, many, many months to work on. I've, I've basically been working on this all year. My goal is to have all the singles spun by the end of the year. So I don't really have to make a decision until the new year. So super good. Uh, people have lots to say. Um, Max had asked about the plying on the spindle. Normally, when, oh, the other thing I was going to say about that, Maxwell, is uh, when we're camping, I always ply on my spindles because that's all I have with us. So if I spin up something while we're camping, I always take my plying spindle. I love my, I don't have it right here, but I love my Steamworks, my Steampunk gear. What is it, Diana? My Steam gear, Steamworks gear, punk gear head spindle. Anyways, yeah, it's great. Um, what else? Liz, it's so good to see you. You're here today. So she's the one that processed this roving for me um, from Kingdom Fleece and Fiber Works. It's so good to see you. Thank you for being here, um, Liz. Um, how does spinning on so many different spindles expect the, except, affect the different weight of singles? Isn't that going to give you an uneven any uneven yarn if all the singles are different? That is a great question, Liz. So we were talking about this in queries and wondering the same thing and talking about it. And then the conversation continued in the Slack channel under hashtag spindle spun stitches. And Becca actually, um, who's Rebecca with a K in the chat chimed in. And she was saying that she actually finds with her support spindles that there isn't that much difference between all of the different weights and all the different yarns. I think the reason, and this is what Rebecca was reflecting on in, in the, um, in the Slack channel when she was reflecting on this was unlike a drop spindle where you have the singles hanging, sorry, where you have the spindle hanging from the singles, um, with supported spindling, this, this, the spindle is supported on something the whole time. So it doesn't seem to affect quite to the same extent the thickness of your singles and how thick, you know, the heavier the drop spindle or suspended spindle, the thicker your singles are going to have to be to hold that weight. And so it just naturally doesn't turn as fast. You don't have quite as much twist. Your singles are a little bit thicker to compensate for that. And then of course a faster, lighter spindle, lots of twist is going to get thrown up in there and it's going to create a, you know, and you're going to naturally start to draft finer and you're going to have a finer singles. But with the support spindles, you don't have that same, those, those same physics happening. There's no gravity. You're drafting against the tip of the spindle instead. So one of the things, and I've had these conversations with Diana and my friend Kim as well, um, what seems to affect the weight of your, what, what seems to be, how can I say this, that it makes sense. The support spindle weight seems to, uh, be more how fast does the spindle spin and for how long. So my really super lightweight spindles that have wood tips, they're slow. They're super slow. They don't spin very much. I have to work really hard to keep them going. A spindle like this, that's, um, I think this is 18 grams. If my memory serves, it might be 22. Uh, it has a metal tip, an incredibly pointy tip, and it just goes like stink. And then like my Mirkwood um, pock, it's quite heavy. It's 20, 
eight or thirty-two. What is it, Dion? Do you remember what our pock, what our Merkwood spindles, how much they weigh? Um, it doesn't necessarily go super, super fast. It doesn't fly like this one, but it goes pretty quick, and uh, and it spins for a long time. So that seems to be sort of more uh, um, the effect that support spindle weight has is how long will it spin for and how fast, is it, how much work do you have to put in to, to get it going? Um, super interesting. Does anybody else have any other questions before we moved on? move on? Rebecca says the three or four apply for me. I love that squoosh. Oh, thank you, Diana. The steampunk gear spindle is the one that I use to apply on. And so does Katrina and I know Diana did. I don't know if you still do, Diana. I know it's still one of your favorites to apply on. Um, Maxwell says my Navajo is quite heavy compared to my support spindles, obviously because it's so much bigger, he says. But thankfully this Navajo was made so that it can be taken apart for traveling purposes. That's awesome. Yes, you were right, uh, Christine. Thank you. So the weight of the spindle seems to affect my hand, says Diana. So Diana is like my, my local expert Oh, her and Kim on support spindles. They both are so passionate about it. You can't help but being pulled into their web and of, of support spindles. Um, so Diana says, if it weighs a lot, it spins for longer, but it will hurt my hands sooner. So I have also found that it, for me personally, if it's too light and I have to constantly be flicking it, my thumb gets sore and I run my spindles down my thumb. I don't know if I can show you. Um, I run my spindle, see it's like opposite for me, but I run them down my thumb like that. And I find that the joint, like just in here, it just gets like a little bit sore. Um, and I have to be really mindful. So the more force I have to use to get it going, I'm like, nope, I'm out. Cause that's gonna aggravate, aggravate that joint. So I just steer away. So I've kind of got like a little shoebox now of spindles that I just don't use, that I'll slowly gift over time. Yeah, yeah, I've got it written down, Dion. I know it came on like the little tag that it that the spindle came with, but I can't remember the weight. Um, I don't have a photographic memory like my brother. <laughs> my brother has a photographic memory. Um, he didn't have to study, but um, I was not given that blessing. I was given the blessing of having to work incredibly hard for 82%. All right. I think we're going to skip the baby doll. I was going to talk a little bit more about the baby doll, but I haven't made that much progress and I've been talking for an hour and um, we've shared so much today and there's been so many announcements and so much to catch you guys up on that I think instead let's go into community participation because it's one of my favorite things to do and um, you guys can share, get a chance to be in the spotlight rather than me. So I'll see you guys on the other side. So, uh, Christina is saying, I spindle ply on top whirl spindles. I have two, the Schneider Steampunk Gear and my Carry Spindles Umbrella Spindle. It's slower, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Absolutely, sometimes slower spindles are totally fine. Eve says, I always wanted to know if an idactic uh, memory means you remember bad stuff as well as the good. I don't know, my brother doesn't remember anything. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? My brother has a photographic memory, but he doesn't remember anything. I'm constantly telling him stuff and he never remembers. And you know what I think it is? Uh, this is my theory. I've told him this. He knows that I think this. Um, I think it's because he never had to work at memorizing anything. He never had to remember anything growing up ever. Um, and so he, because he never had to like learn that, if you ask him about something now, he has no idea. He's never had to practice remembering. And uh, as long as he can see it, he'll remember it like from like a schoolwork perspective. And so he never had to work at being sure to remember things. And he doesn't remember stuff from our childhood at all. And um, yeah, I just, it's just a theory. I have nothing to base it on, but I do wonder. All right. 
This is the page that I always show every show because it's just easier than trying to explain everything to you guys at, when you're just kind of getting up and going because I think just all of the alongs that we have running are just kind of a bit overwhelming. We started a lot of stuff during COVID um, because of the pandemic and people were home and they were working on multiple things. Uh, we did our year of luxury through 2021. And then people were continuing to work on that. And then we did our natural shades along. I had lofty ideas of spinning and weaving a natural shade sweater, which I'm still working on. Um, and then of course we have our year long ongoing braiding color study on Radner. I'll be talking about all of that starting in September. So all of the content that you get access to when you join Patreon will be uh, me covering uh, our breeding color study on the Radner. So we're starting off with the um, comb top and then I'll move on to the carded prep in October. And then November, we'll kind of move on to the project and what that looks like. And throughout the whole thing, uh, all of the content, what will sort of be the overarching um, theme, if you will, is color. And we'll be looking at analogous color, complementary color, how do we use them together, all that kind of stuff. So that's on Radner. You do not have to have bought the fiber from Katrina to participate. You can get your Radner from anywhere. Um, I don't actually think that Katrina has Radner anymore in stock, but uh, regardless, you do not need to uh, purchase from her. Just jump right in. So that is what's coming up for me. And then of course the sock color study. So this is sort of an ongoing exploration. It was a grassroots movement by Rebecca. And she's, we'll be talking about that quite a bit today in our community participation and all the photos that we're showing. You know, that's a really good point, AJ. She said, um, they say um, it might just be a visual versus an acoustic memory thing. That's really interesting because he's also a musician. So I wonder, because he he has perfect tone. So I he's always played guitar, piano, but I was really surprised when he didn't go into music at university. Uh, he went into uh, microeconomics instead. But I wonder about that, the visual versus the acoustic thing, because he, yeah, he's, he's a musician. So I wonder. So interesting, right? I can, I, I always ask him about all these things. My brother, he's very patient with me. I'm always asking him all these different things because um, <laughs> we're so different. We're so different. <laughs> all right, so our sock color study. The, the thread on both uh, the Ravelry group and in the Slack channel kind of has, have gone, has gone crazy over the last few weeks. And I think it's because people are knitting and they're spinning and they're sharing their stuff. So Rebecca has been sort of hosting this and she will continue to. And uh, so please reach out to her um, if you would like to, everybody can participate. If you're working on socks, this is the place for you. So this is um, Rebecca's socks. She, there's a whole, this is, this is a spotlight on Rebecca, this today's show, um, because she <coughs> has been working on all of these socks. So we've got lots of photos and lots of stuff that she's been working on. So I hope that you guys, um, um, are excited to see what she's been doing. So this is her purple opposing ply yarn. When she knit them into socks, the fabric looked pretty much the same as the socks knit from traditional three ply yarns, um, spun from the same fiber. They're a little bit stretchier, but they don't feel really bumpy or anything. This, excuse me, it will be a good comparison for wear. And I just loved these purples. I thought this was so pretty. Um, I thought the same thing about my opposing ply. We have talked about this a ton about the whole idea of that opposing ply wearing away at the other two singles. Mine got eaten by moths, so we'll never know. This is a, a an experiment I would love to repeat in the future. But um, yeah, this it'll be interesting to hear from her because Rebecca wears her socks very like very hard wearing, uh, like she wears she really wears them. So it'll be interesting to hear what she says um, uh, as she wears them. You distracted me, Eve, she says. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh as I was finishing off what I was saying. I just realized now that we can come hang out with you and Rebecca and that we can get some, quote, R&R. &R. <laughs> yeah, me too, Dion. I love the colors. So this was her combo spin. This I love this yarn so much. I, I swooned over it on a previous episode. This was the cool yarn spun from the leftover one ounces saved from three previous spins. As discussed in a previous post, the combo drafted yarn looks slightly lighter in value than the combo plied yarn. 
This held true in the knitting as well, uh, but you can also see the differences in how they stripe uh, and the specks of color. The combo plied yarn looks more speckled and has more distinct short stripes, whereas the combo drafted yarn still has striping, but it almost looks watercolor painted. The stripes, of course, are longer. So I'm not sure which is which, but I think the one that's pointing, so if, the, if her feet are like, like this, so this is her in the photo, if you were standing like Rebecca, this would be my right foot, the one that's forward. I think that one is the combo drafted and the one that's at the angle at the back on the on our right but her left, I think that's the combo plied yarn. And um, when I've worked with combo draft and combo plied, I very much have had the same experience. I, my personal preference is more towards the combo draft, um, but I do love the speckling that you can get in the combo plied. I think it's very cool. This is more, this is her breeding color study. So I don't know if you guys remember, I'm gonna move myself cause I'm over the typing here. I'll move myself back in a sec. So um, I don't know if you guys remember her starting these and she had done the, the cabled, um, uh, the, the carded cable series and she had the gorgeous photo of the yarn and I, I just thought it was the best. So she's calling these her Seussian stripes, her Seussian striped socks. I love that, Dr. Seuss. I took half of each bat and spun alone into a, and spun them alone into a cabled yarn. Then I put the, these into socks with opposite stripes. I love them terribly. I love how even though the colors are complements, they play nice so nicely together. S comes from using two colorways from the same dyer, um, though especially from one as talented as Katrina. I would second that. I found the Hill Radner hard on my hands to knit in a way that was not hard when I was spinning. Good to know. Certainly this was exacerbated by the fact that I was knitting tightly for socks and perhaps also by the cabled structure of the yarn, which was a bit nubbly. But aren't they phenomenal? I think they're fantastic. I love these. Dr. Seuss socks. Those socks are so sweet. Yes, they're amazing. All right. So this is the other yarn that she was sharing. So this is also breeding color study. So this technically could be breeding color study or it could be um, the sock color study. This is the knitted result from my attempting to make a gradient of these two complementary colorways in two different ways. For one, I hand carded bits from both bats to make a perfectly smooth gradient. For the other, I tried to do the same thing by holding strips of the bat together in drafting. They didn't look too different in the skein, I thought, but the knitting showed in tr the truth. The carded gradient looks like a poem. Uh, the held together gradient looks like an argument. I love that. I'm gonna read that again. The carded gradient looks like a poem, but the held together gradient looks like an argument, <laughs> which is a fair description of what the spinning was like as well. The three ply structure of the yarn was a bit easier on the hands as well, giving the tooth toothiness of the Hill Radner. Let's hope both pairs of Hill Radner socks wear like iron. I hope so. I really hope so. And you can tell which one's which, right? The um, For those who are new to spinning and are sort of trying to figure this all out, the one that she describes as the cardi carded gradient that looks like a poem is the one that's on your right, her left. The It's nearest to the that piece of rope on the on the railing there. And the one that she describes as looking like an argument that was um, held together gradient, so she hold, held the strips together to slowly move the gradient along, is the one that's on our left, but her right. And it's the one with the brighter red for the toe, the brighter pinky corally red toe. That gradient is gorgeous. I'm loving everyone's socks, yes. I had to share them all, Rebecca, you're new on the team. Of course I had to share them all. <laughs> Look at her work. Her work is amazing. You guys have to get on board with, with everything that she's, she's doing. So Becca says, who's also a dear friend for all of us and, and Becca's our welcoming committee on, uh, on Slack channel. Um, she always is the one that, that says the first hello to everybody, encourages you to introduce yourself in the intros channel. Um, she says, I prefer the look of the argument. <laughs> I love that. She says, what does this mean? <laughs> I have to admit, I like them both. I think they're both uh, so unique and beautiful in their own right. I think they're just awesome. Anyways, I loved, loved seeing this progression of this study from Rebecca. 
So spindle spun summer. There have been lots of spindle photos. They are so much fun to look at. They're so much fun to, to, to see. Thank you for sharing them all. So this is from Sam. Woohoo, success. Sam is in the chat today. Um, she found a way to spin more comfortably that leaves me, sh uh, that makes me leave my shoulders down. So one of the things that happens when we support spindles, our shoulders slowly go like this and we end up spinning like this. So watch that shoulders down, not just down, back. Engage that upper back, your, your uh, lower trapezius, your rhomboids. You want to pull your shoulders back and down. Engage that so that you can spin for long, long hours. Use those big, big muscles in your back, not these teeny, teeny, tiny muscles in your shoulders. Filled my first ever support spindle. Number three, I went back to my first support spindle that I could not get to work, possibly because it is a heavier spindle and longer, and I'm able to get yarn on there. That's amazing, Sam. It's amazing like the learning curve, right? Like you've gone through this big curve and now you're, now you're really off to the races. I'm so happy that I'm now enjoying support spindling. Just as I have a new spindle in the post from Adelaide Walker. It's awesome, congratulations. This is from Dion, so, oh, the colors, Dion, always with the colors, I love it. This blend of fiber I made Romney in three colors of sari silk is spinning up like a dream on my Turkish spindle. Beautiful, and she's got a distaff there and everything. She's the real deal, love it. Rebecca says she's struggling with what it, what is totally why I struggle with, with spindling. When I go back to spindling one day, it will be like intense yoga to make good habits, totally. Yes, you have to have good ergonomics. I know Carson's, you know, he, he's got his art, the, um, you know, his stuff in, in Ply Magazine, like read it. Um, your, you, your, your wealth is your health. You've got to look after your body. This is from Kristen. I love this so much. Kristen, I wanted to throw in a whole bunch more photos, but I just didn't, I, I just, um, didn't have room um but this is so inspiring so we've been looking at all of this cotton content and uh, Kristen has been pumping us in um, queries with questions and and like really working on on her cotton and it's just been awesome to see her growth and how much she's done and she's just been oh it's been so cool so um she's been spin she's been spinning all of this the spindle spinning all of this cotton and she's working with these natural shades and she's just oh it's awesome so um she's cast on she's not finished spinning all of the cotton yet she's still working on it but um she's she cast on for the velocour she's going to do it in the cotton which was one of the three samples that andrea had um knit for this pattern so there's a if you look at Ravelry there's three different sweaters that Andrea knit so look at the look at the photos uh, one is in 100% cotton one is in 100% wool and then the other one is a blend and um, so Kristen thought it would be perfect for all of her spindle spun yarn and that's what she's been knitting I'm just I can't wait to see her model it it's just awesome so everybody's been watching her progress no pressure Kristen <laughs> All right, so just general makes and shares. This is courtesy of just our group. Um, this is from Shauna. I had to share this. Your husband is so cute. I finished the Gramps cardigan by Tin Can Knits for my husband. It only took me four years. It's the first garment I've ever made for him. He really wanted elbow patches and pockets. I knit the patches but couldn't get them sewn on so, they, so that they looked good. I ended up using duplicate stitch over the elbow area. And unfortunately, this particular photo doesn't show it, but um, if you go and look at the project, she sh there's multiple photos and you can see them. They're really cute. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. He's happy about it. He looks so happy. He looks so, oh, just totally chuffed. He looks awesome. Well done, Shauna. This is from Kat. I won't, I won't read all of this, but I don't remember if I shared this here or not. Forgive me if this is duplicates. My last spin for Tour de Fleece de Femme was a sock blend of Cheviot and Mohair. I blended the bats for a four ply, but got a bit bored and ended after spinning three of my four bats. Then I started to ply. When I started to ply, it was all a bit of a nightmare. The singles had become, um, had quite a bit of twist intentionally. That's how I like my sock yarns and I didn't have a good way of tensioning two bobbins and a toilet paper roll. So I ended up chain plying instead, which worked well enough. And after dying with 
the last of the dye stock from my tonal dyeing experiment a while ago and a bit of black sprinkled on top I cast on for the socks. Isn't, aren't those incredible? They're in the corner. The yarn turned out a tad on the thin side for socks at 40 wraps per inch. That's really fine. So I had to frog the sample it, um, that you see in the photo and re-knit it on smaller 1.75 millimeter needles, which seems okay now. It's too fine, Kat. That's really fine. This is from Megan. I had a great camping trip with lots of mountain biking, hiking, and crafting. One hand spun sweater, a second four ounce of Cormo yak of her Cormo and yak spin, and one sock, and a large portion of my silk medieval embroidery. And now to block. Megan always comes back from her trips, and everybody's like, "Okay, what did she get done?" Because it's always epic, amazing. I love that sweater. Those are totally my colors. This is from Suzanne. This is beautiful, Suzanne. I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. I recently completed this shawl using Rachel's delightful garter vanilla shawl recipe. That's on Ravelry. It's free for anybody who's interested. The hand spun is from two slightly different colorways of Falkland braids that I purchased at the Great Lakes Fiber Show last year. I've actually been to the Great Lakes. Uh, I split them and mixed the stripes to blend the two colorways. Beautiful. Yeah, I've been to Yellowstone. I've been to Salt Lake City. I never thought I'd be so intrigued by cotton, says Kristen. It's been very fun. I think it's awesome. And it's been so much fun to watch you and Charlotte and Dorothy's been spinning cotton. It's so, so cool. Anyways, thank you so much, you guys. Um, and thank you for sharing all that you do. It is truly inspiring. So thank you so much. We have had quite the show today. It has been very big and very long and there's been a lot of talking. Um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful couple of weeks. I do need to make a quick announcement. I will throw this in the Slack channel uh, for those who are patrons of the show. There will not be a show on the first Tuesday of September because we will be in Toronto. Um, I just need to talk about that for just a second. So on Tuesday, September 6th, for those who are watching, um, there will be kind of a pub meetup in Toronto. We'll try to do it somewhere around Union. Um, so I'll post all of the information in the Slack channel and I'll throw up a quick post on Patreon. We'll try and get that organized. It might be kind of, um, it, it's time is going and Jenny's been in Scotland. So we're just trying to like figure it out. Um, but as soon as I connect with her and, and we get that all sorted, I'll post where it is. And um, that will be on the night of September 6th. So I hope that I see at least a couple of you there. And I will let you know the details um, for September the 6th. We'll meet, we'll meet somewhere around Union where it's easy for people to get to. Um, so that is coming up on the 6th. So there will not be a live stream that day because I will be in Toronto. Um, however, we'll just shift it by one week and we'll do it on the 13th after I am back. So we'll have the stream on the second Tuesday of September instead of the first. So that will be, the next show will be on September 13th. So please don't be, be too confused because I'll be in Toronto. So until then, happy, happy, happy spinning, happy weaving, happy knitting. I didn't even have any weaving to show you guys. I've not thrown a shuttle other than working on my unit three at all. Um, I hope you guys, those who are in the UK, go to bed, get some good sleep. And for those who are um, in North America, have a good dinner and um, for those who are down under and they're just starting their day, have a wonderful breakfast. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. Happy spinning. Bye, guys.